Hello, mathematicians. Here's the video for the unit five and six review. And the homework looks just like the classwork, and it will look like the quiz as well. So if you feel good on this, you're going to feel really good on the quiz. Number one, circle the correct names. There may be more than one right answer. For geometry, you have to know a lot of vocabulary words. Let's look at this first one. It is a quadrilateral because it has four sides. It is a parallelogram because the top is parallel to the bottom and the left is parallel to the right. So yes, it's a parallelogram. Okay, just say yes to all of these questions. Ram, bus. All buses are the same length. All seats are the same length. All windows are the same length. All kindergartners on the bus are the same length. Okay, so when you hear Ram, bus, think same length. And all four of these sides are the same length. So yes, it's a rhombus. Rectangle, angle, angle. All about the right angles, baby. This has no right angles, so it is not a rectangle. Next one. Yes, it's a quadrilateral because it has four sides. It is not a parallelogram. The left and right are parallel, but the top and bottom are not. It is not a rhombus because everything is not the same length. But yes, it is a trapezoid. It's the exact definition of a trapezoid, right? The left is parallel to the right, but the top and bottom are not parallel. The definition of a trapezoid is one set of parallel sides. Trapezoids always look like ramps. Okay, next one. An obtuse triangle. If it's got one obtuse angle, automatically an obtuse triangle. Say, silly scalene. You crazy shape with all your crazy sides. It's got a short side, a medium side, and the diagonal is always the longest side. Um, so yes, it is a scalene triangle. Isosceles, point to your eyeballs. How many sides are the same in an isosceles? Two, yeah. Well, this has all sides that are different, so it's not isosceles. It can't be scalene and isosceles at the same time. Um, and it is not acute. Even though this and this are acute, all three have to be acute to be an acute triangle. All right, hexagon. Whoa, the shape is crazy. Can I already circle irregular? I know automatically it's irregular, right? Okay, let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. If it has six sides, it is a hexagon. And remember, hexagon has an X in it just like the number six has an X in it. Okay, uh, the second row, it's definitely not regular. It's definitely irregular. Remember, regular means the sides and angles are all the same. Um, and if we count the sides, one, two, three, four, five sides, so it is a pentagon, an irregular pentagon. Next one, parallelogram. The top is parallel to the bottom, and the left is parallel to the right. Yeah, it's a parallelogram. And yes, it's a quad because it's got four sides. Let's meet at the quad. How many buildings? Four. That's your quadricep. How many muscles? Four. Quadruplets. How many babies? Four. four. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> Rectangle. Angle. Angle. All about the right angles, baby. Yeah, it's got four right angles. It's a rectangle. And it is not a square. Only one thing is a square. A square is very specific. Four sides. All the sides are the same length and all of the angles are right angles. Okay, equilateral triangle, yes, because all the angles, I'm, I'm sorry, I was thinking acute, sorry. Not equilateral, because all the sides are not equal. Acute, here it is, yes, because all three angles are acute. Isosceles, I'm pointing to my eyes and I'm thinking of the number two. Two sides are the same, so yes, it's isosceles. And no, it's not a right triangle. It has to have a right angle to be a right triangle. And the last one, a rhombus. Is everything the same length? Yes. Is it a square? Uh, yeah, duh, because it's a square, right? Uh, it's definitely quadrilateral because it has four sides. And rectangle, angle, angle, it's got four right angles. So yes, it is a rectangle, all four of those. Okay, number two. If we measure these, I'm going to measure some of these right here. And I'll always give you a little bit of wiggle room, especially because those rays don't quite meet the edge of the plastic. And it looks to me like this one's pointing right at 30 degrees. Okay. 
So I would say that this acute angle is 30 degrees, but remember, I'll give you a little wiggle room, about five degrees below and five degrees above. So anywhere between 25 and 35, I would accept. Next one is obtuse. So I know it's gonna be more than 90. And it looks to me, let's see, I was about to say 75 until I realized that it was an obtuse angle. So I'm looking at the other set of numbers and it's right between 100 and 110. And right between 100 and 110 is 105. But again, I would accept for the first one anywhere between 25 and 35 and anywhere between 100 and 110. Just make sure if it's acute, your answer better be less than 90. If it's obtuse, your answer better be more than 90. Okay, area is length times width. So the first one, I'm going to do 18 times 9. to get 162, and I'm going to use the word inches because that's the word they use, but not plain inches, square inches. When I say area, you say square, area, 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 so 162 square inches, and perimeter, don't forget to add the lengths of all four sides, 18 plus 9 plus 18 plus 9, and it doesn't matter the order in which you add all four of those sides, everybody might do it a little bit differently. I'm going to add those two long sides. And the two short sides, 9 plus 9, would be another 18. If you added it a little bit differently, that's okay. To get a perimeter of 54, say plain perimeter. So it's just plain inches. Okay, on to the back. Number four is like a four-step problem. And if you get uh, make a mistake early on, it affects your answer. So you have to be really careful the whole way through. Our classroom is collecting box tops. We want to collect 1,000. So far, we've collected 18 bags of 15 and 12 bags of 30. How many more box tops do we need to get to 1,000? So 18 bags of 15. I'm going to do that first. to get 270, and then 12 bags of 30, I'm going to do 12 times 30. Oftentimes, Mrs. Judson, instead of doing 12 times 30, I'll just do 12 times 3, and then what do I have to add to the end? Yeah, 12 times 3 is so fast, so quick. So instead of 12 times 30, I'm just going to do 12 times 3, but then of course I've got to add that 0 at the end. But if you did 12 times 30, you would also get 360. Okay. Now my job is to add what we've collected so far. So I'm going to add those two numbers, 360 plus 270. To get 630. And the final step is to take our goal minus what we've collected so far. And that will give us the answer, what we still have left. I can do 0 minus 0. I cannot do 0 minus 3. I can't take away from nothing, so I'm going to take 1,000 and break it into 10 hundreds and take 100 and break it into 10 tens. And now I can subtract to get a final answer of 370. Grandma bought stickers for all five of her grandchildren. She has 200 15 sheets of stickers. How many sheets will each kid get? All right, 215 divided by 5. Um, if you don't have room, I don't know if you've ever turned your paper sideways, but that's kind of a nice way to use that space. 215 divided by 5. 5 cannot go into 2, but 5 can go into 21 four times. Multiply. Subtract, bring down. 5 can go into 15 three times. Multiply, subtract, nothing to bring down. That's when you know you're done. So 43 sheets or 43 sheets of stickers would be a good answer. Okay, number six. <clears throat> There's a lot of places to miss a point on number six. It says right in the instructions that we're measuring 
jumps of frogs in inches, and it says complete the line plot below. Be sure to finish labeling all of the marks, and then plot the data. So let's go ahead and label it first before we even uh, jump into anything. And it looks like everything is in eighths, so I'm going to go ahead and label, and you should do that as well. Because our whole line plot is in eighths, my next step is going to be to make all of our data into eighths as well. So we have to make some equivalent fractions, I think. Okay, so I'm going to look up at my data. And I'm going to make everything into eights. The first one is good. Frog one is good. One fourth. I know if I double the top and double the bottom, one fourth is the same as two eights. If I quadruple the top and quadruple the bottom, a half is the same as four eights. Okay, so change everything so it's in eight. So you might have to double the bottom and double the top, or trip, uh, quadruple the bottom and quadruple the top. So that way everything is in eights, and it'll make answering these questions and plotting those X's on the line plot much easier. And be real careful where you put your X's. 13 and 1 eighth. I'm going to go ahead and put these nine X's in. This isn't hard, but it's very easy to make a mistake. So I guess just try to be really careful and go really slow and double check when you're done. Make sure you have nine X's. I'm going to go ahead and answer these questions. Here we go. Say, minimum. Is the minimum 12? No, there's no data there. 12 is the smallest number on the line plot, but it's not the smallest piece of data. And that's what the minimum is asking. The smallest piece of data is 12 and 2 eighths. And you do not have to simplify it, but if you did simplify it, I would also accept 12 and 1 fourth. Maximum is the maximum 14. No, there's no data there. The maximum is the biggest piece of data. And the biggest piece of data is at 13 and 5 eighths. And that is already simplified. All right, sing with me. We get real southern here, don't we? Home, home on the range. Where the max and the minimum play. So the range is the difference between the biggest and the smallest. So 13 and 5 eighths minus 12 and 2 eighths. A big old 13 minus a big old 12 is a big old 1. And 5 eighths minus 2 eighths is 3 eighths. Mode, most, mode, most. The number that's the most popular, the only one that had 2, is 13 and 4 eighths. And again, if you were to simplify it, I would also accept 13 and a half. And the last question, if your X's are in the right spot, hopefully this will go well. If your X's are not in the right spot, we'll probably get this one wrong as well. How far did the, th the three frogs who jumped the furthest jump all together? So on this one, I need to look at the three frogs that jumped the furthest, the three biggest numbers. So 13 and 5 eighths plus 13 and 4 eighths plus 13 and 4 eighths. Uh, 
Okay. I'm going to add up the whole numbers first. A big old 13 plus a big old 13 plus a big old 13. And 13 plus 13 plus 13, some of you might know that in your head, is 39. And now I'm going to look at that fraction part of it, okay? And I see, I'm not sure if you see what I see, but do you see a 4 eighths and a 4 eighths? And if you put 4 eighths plus 4 eighths together, what does it equal? An 8 eighths, that's right. So if I put that 4 eighths and 4 eighths together, that's one whole. So now, instead of 39, I'm now up to 40. And the last thing I need to add in is that 5 eighths. So there's our final answer, 40 and 5 eighths. All right, here are the answers on page 1. And the answers for page 2. All right, kids, I will see you in class.